Nightclub, Wikipedia article audio. A nightclub is an entertainment venue and bar that usually operates late into the night. A nightclub is generally distinguished from regular bars, pubs, or taverns by the inclusion of a stage for live music, one or more dance floor areas and a DJ booth, where a DJ plays recorded music. The upmarket nature of nightclubs can be seen in the inclusion of VIP areas in some nightclubs, for celebrities and their guests. Nightclubs are much more likely than pubs or sports bars to use bouncers to screen prospective club goers for entry. Some nightclub bouncers do not admit people with ripped jeans or other informal clothing or gang apparel as part of a dress code. The busiest nights for a nightclub are Friday and Saturday night. Most clubs or club nights cater to certain music genres, such as house music or hip hop. Terminology History Early History 1970s, Disco 1980s New York and London 1990s, 2000s and 2010s Recurring Features Club Nights Entry Criteria Cover Charge Dress Code Exclusive Boutique Clubs Guest List Photography Security Serious Incidents A nightclub may also be called a discotheque or disco, dance club, dance bar, or live music club. From about 1900 to 1920, Working-class Americans would gather at honky-tonks or juke joints to dance to music played on a piano or a jukebox. Webster Hall is credited as the first modern nightclub, being built in 1886 and starting off as a social hall, originally functioning as a home for dance and political activism events. During Prohibition in the United States, Nightclubs went underground as illegal speakeasy bars, with Webster Hall staying open, with rumors circulating of Al Capone's involvement and police bribery. With the repeal of Prohibition in February 1933, nightclubs were revived, such as New York's 21 Club, Copacabana, El Morocco, and the Stork Club. These nightclubs featured big bands. In Germany, possibly the first discotheque was Scotch Club. In occupied France, jazz and bebop music, and the jitterbug dance were banned by the Nazis as decadent American influences, so as an act of French resistance, people met at hidden basements called discotheques where they danced to jazz and swing music, which was played on a single turntable when a jukebox was not available. These discotheques were also patronized by anti-Vichy youth called Zazus. There were also underground discotheques in Nazi Germany patronized by anti-Nazi youth called the Swing Kids. In Harlem, Connie's Inn and the Cotton Club were popular venues for white audiences. Before 1953 and even some years thereafter, most bars and nightclubs used a jukebox or mostly live bands. In Paris, at a club named Whiskey A Gogo, -Go, founded in 1947, R.A. Copyright Jean in 1953 laid down a dance floor, suspended colored lights and replaced the jukebox with two turntables that she operated herself so there would be no breaks between the music. The Whiskey A Go Go set into place the standard elements of the modern post-World War II discotheque-style nightclub. At the end of the 1950s, several of the coffee bars in Soho introduced afternoon dancing and the most famous, at least on the continent, was Leon Fon Terribles at 93, Dean St. These original discotheques were nothing like the nightclubs, 
as they were unlicensed and catered to a very young public a euro mostly made up of French and Italians working illegally, mostly in catering, to learn English as well as au pair girls from most of Western Europe. In the early 1960s, Mark Burley opened a members-only discotheque nightclub, Annabelle's, in Berkeley Square, London. In 1962, the Peppermint Lounge in New York City became popular and is the place where go-go dancing originated. However, the first rock and roll generation preferred rough and tumble bars and taverns to nightclubs, and the nightclub did not attain mainstream popularity until the 1970s disco era. Sybil Burton, former wife of actor Richard Burton, opened the Arthur Discothecae in 1965 on East 54th Street in Manhattan on the site of the old El Morocco nightclub and it became the first, foremost and hottest disco in New York City through 1969. Disco has its roots in the underground club scene. During the early 1970s in New York City, Disco clubs were places where oppressed or marginalized groups such as homosexuals, blacks, Latinos, Italian Americans, and Jews could party without following male to female dance protocol or exclusive club policies. Discotheques had a law where for every three men, there was one woman. This shifted the idea of this post heterosexist community as women could be seen as a kind of gateway for men to advance their own experience without fear of being arrested under the male-to-male -male dancing law. With the rise of the black female diva, Eta Euro trademark s the overwhelmingly gay fandom that latched onto the music that would be the base of disco. Although the culture that surrounded disco was progressive in dance couples, cross-genre music, and a push to put the physical over the rational, the role of female bodies looked to be placed in the role of safety net. It brought together people from all walks of life and backgrounds. These clubs acted as safe havens for homosexual party-goers to dance in peace and away from public scrutiny. By the late 1970s many major U.S. cities had thriving disco club scenes centered on discotheques, nightclubs, and private loft parties where DJs would play disco hits through powerful paw systems for the dancers. The DJs played, a smooth mix of long single records to keep people dancing all night long. Some of the most prestigious clubs had elaborate lighting systems that throbbed to the beat of the music. Disco has evolved drastically. Eta Euro trademark s classified both as a musical genre and as a nightclub, and in the late 70s, disco began to act as a safe haven for social outcasts. This club culture that originated in downtown New York, was attended by a variety of different ethnicities and economic backgrounds. It was an inexpensive activity to indulge in, and discos united a multitude of different minorities in a way never seen before, including those in the gay and psychedelic communities. The music ultimately was what brought people together. Some cities had disco dance instructors or dance schools that taught people how to do popular disco dances such as touch dancing, the hustle and the cha-cha-cha. There were also disco fashions that discotheque goers wore for nights out at their local disco, such as sheer, flowing Halston dresses for women and shiny polyester Kiana shirts for men. Disco clubs and Hedonistic loft parties had a club culture with many Italian-American, African-American, gay and Hispanic people. In addition to the dance and fashion aspects of the disco club scene, there was also a thriving drug subculture, particularly for recreational drugs that would enhance the experience of dancing to the loud music and the flashing lights, such as cocaine, amyl nitrite poppers, and the other quintessential 1970s club drug Quaalude, which suspended motor coordination and turned one's arms and legs to jello. 
the massive quantities of drugs ingested in discotheques by newly liberated gay men produced the next cultural phenomenon of the disco era, rampant promiscuity and public sex. While the dance floor was the central arena of seduction, actual sex usually took place in the nether regions of the disco, bathroom stalls, exit stairwells, and so on. In other cases the disco became a kind of main course in a hedonist's menu for a night out. Famous 1970s discotheques included celebrity hangouts such as Manhattan S Studio 54, which was operated by Steve Rubel and Ian Schrager. Studio 54 was notorious for the hedonism that went on within, the balconies were known for sexual encounters, and drug use was rampant. Its dance floor was decorated with an image of the man in the moon that included an animated cocaine spoon. Other famous 1970s discotheques in New York City included Manhattan S Starship Discovery 1 at 350 West 42nd Street. The album cover of Saturday Night Bands Come On and Dance, Dance features two dancers in the Starship Discovery 1. Roseland's Ballroom, Xenon, The Loft, The Paradise Garage, a recently renovated Copacabana, and Auxiliary Puces, one of the first gay disco bars. In San Francisco, there was the Trocadero Transfer, the I-Beam, and the End Up. By the early 1980s, the term disco had largely fallen out of favor in most of the English-speaking world. During the 1980s, during the New Romantic movement, London had a vibrant nightclub scene, which included clubs like the Blitz, the Bat Cave, the Camden Palace and Club for Heroes. Both music and fashion embraced the aesthetics of the movement. Bands included Depeche Mode, Yazoo, The Human League, Duran Duran, Blondie, Eurythmics, and Ultravox. Reggae-influenced bands included Boy George and Culture Club, and electronic vibe bands included Visage. At London nightclubs, young men would often wear makeup and young women would wear men's suits. The largest UK cities like Leeds, Newcastle, Liverpool, Swansea, Manchester, and several key European places like Paris, Ibiza, Rimini etc. also played a significant role in the evolution of clubbing, DJ culture and nightlife. Significant New York nightclubs of the period were Area, Dance Tyria, and the Limelight. In Europe and North America, Nightclubs play disco-influenced dance music such as house music, techno, and other dance music styles such as electronica, breakbeat and trance. Most nightclubs in the U.S. major cities that have an early adulthood clientele, play hip-hop, dance pop, house and slash or trance music. These clubs are generally the largest and most frequented of all of the different types of clubs. The emergence of the Super Club created a global phenomenon, with Juliana's Tokyo, Ministry of Sound, Cream and Pasha. Techno clubs are especially popular around the world since the early 1990s. Famous examples of the 1990s include Tresser, E-Work and Bunker in Berlin, Omen and Dorian Gray in Frankfurt, Ultraschall. KWA Euro Das Hiais Kraftwerk and the Tri Temple in Munich, Stamheim in Kassel, and the Hainda in Manchester. A famous precursor also was the House Club Warehouse in Chicago. Since the late 2000s, two venues that received particularly high media attention were Berghain in Berlin and Fabric in London. In other languages, Nightclubs are sometimes still referred to as discos or discotheques, French, discotheque, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish, discoteca, entro, and balic. Discos is commonly used in all others in Latin America.
In Japanese A with tilde A pound A superscript 1 A superscript 3, Disuko refers to an older, smaller, less fashionable venue, while A A with tilde copyright A with tilde, Karabu refers to a more recent, larger, more popular venue. The term night is used to refer to an evening focusing on a specific genre, such as retro music night or a singles night. In Hong Kong and China, nightclub is used as a euphemism for a hostess club, and the association of the term with the sex trade has driven out the regular usage of the term. A recent trend in the North American, Australian and European nightclub industry is the usage of video. VJs mix video content in a similar manner that DJs mix audio content, creating a visual experience that is intended to complement the music. Many clubs have recurring club nights on different days of the week. The music festival Bang Face, for example, started out as a club night. Most club nights focus on a particular genre or sound for branding effects. Many nightclubs use bouncers to choose who can enter the club, or specific lounges or VIP areas. Some high-priced nightclubs have one group of bouncers to screen clients for entry at the main door, and then other bouncers to screen for entry to other dance floors, lounges or VIP areas. For legal reasons, in most jurisdictions, the bouncers have to check ID to ensure that prospective patrons are of legal drinking age and that they are not intoxicated already. In this respect, a nightclub's use of bouncers is no different from the use of bouncers by pubs and sports bars. However, in expensive, high-end nightclubs, Bouncers may screen patrons using criteria other than just age and intoxication status, dress code and guest list. This type of screening is used by clubs to make their club exclusive, by denying entry to people who are not dressed in a stylish enough manner. While some clubs have written dress codes, such as no ripped jeans, no jeans, no gang clothing, and so on. Other clubs may not post their policies. As such, the club's bouncers may deny entry to anybody at their discretion. The guest list is typically used for private parties and events held by celebrities. At private parties, the hosts may only want their friends to attend. At celebrity events, the hosts may wish the club to only be attended by A list individuals. In this way, the famous guests can avoid having to deal with fans from the general public asking to have selfie photos with them. In most cases, entering a nightclub requires a flat fee, called a cover charge. Some clubs waive or reduce the cover charge for early arrivers, special guests, or women but the law is rarely enforced, and open violations are frequent. Friends of the doorman or the club owner may gain free entrance. Sometimes, especially at larger clubs in continental European countries, one gets only a pay card at the entrance, on which all money spent in the discotheque is marked. Sometimes, entrance fee and cloakroom costs are paid by cash, and only the drinks in the club are paid using a pay card. Some clubs, especially those located in Las Vegas, offer patrons the chance to sign up on their guest list. A club's guest list is a special promotion the venue offers separate from general admission. Each club has different benefits when you are signed up on their guest list. Some of the benefits of being on a club's guest list are, free entry, discounted cover charge, the ability to skip the line, and free drinks. Many clubs hire a promotions team to find and sign up guests to the club's guest list. There are a few online service companies that offer guest list sign-ups for multiple venues, such as Nightlife Q.
Many nightclubs enforce a dress code in order to ensure a certain type of clientele is in attendance at the venue. Some upscale nightclubs ban attendees from wearing trainers or jeans while other nightclubs will advertise a vague dress to impress dress code that allows the bouncers to discriminate at will against those vying for entry to the club. Many exceptions are made to nightclub dress codes with denied entry usually reserved for the most glaring rule breakers or those thought to be unsuitable for the party. Certain nightclubs like fetish nightclubs may apply a dress code to a leather only, rubber only or fantasy dress code. The dress code criterion is often an excuse for discriminatory practices, such as in the case of Carpenter v. Limelight Entertainment Ltd. Large cosmopolitan cities that are home to large affluent populations often have what are known as exclusive boutique nightclubs. This type of club typically has a capacity of less than 200 occupants and a very strict entrance policy, which usually requires an entrant to be on the club's guest list. While not explicitly members and only clubs, such as Soho House, Exclusive nightclubs operate with a similar level of exclusivity. As they are off-limits to most of the public and ensure the privacy of guests, many celebrities favor these types of clubs to other, less exclusive, clubs that do not cater as well to their needs. Another differentiating feature of exclusive nightclubs is, in addition to being known for a certain type of music, they are known for having a certain type of crowd, for instance, a fashion-forward, affluent crowd or a crowd with a high concentration of fashion models. Many exclusive boutique clubs market themselves as being a place to socialize with models and celebrities. Affluent patrons who find that marketing message appealing are often willing to purchase bottle service at a markup of several times the retail cost of the liquor. London's most exclusive boutique nightclubs include Amica, Cirque Le Soir, Project, The Box, and The Rose Club. They are frequently visited by an array of A-list celebrities from the fashion, film, and music industries. All are located in London's prestigious Mayfair, except Cirque L. E. Soir and The Box, which are both located in Soho. Many nightclubs operate a guest list that allows certain attendees to enter the club for free or at a reduced rate. Some nightclubs have a range of unpublished guest list options ranging from free, to reduced, to full price with line bypass privileges only. Nightclub goers on the guest list often have a separate queue and sometimes a separate entrance from those used by full price paying attendees. It is common for the guest list lineup to be no shorter or even longer than the full paying or ticketed queues. Some nightclubs allow clubbers to register for the guest list through their websites. There are a few online service companies that offer guest list sign ups for multiple venues such as the Las Vegas-based company Nightlife Q. At high-end or exclusive nightclubs, professional photographers will take publicity photos of patrons, to use in advertising for the nightclub. Digital SLR cameras and speed light flash units are typically used. Concert photography and event photography are used to provide club goers with a memorable keepsake in addition to promo material used by clubs. Since several years, some nightclubs, and in particular techno clubs pursue a strict no-photo policy in order to protect the clubbing experience, and smartphone camera lenses of visitors are taped up with stickers when one enters the venue. Most nightclubs employ teams of bouncers, who have the power to restrict entry to the club and remove people. Some bouncers use handheld metal detectors to prevent weapons being brought into clubs. Bouncers often eject patrons who bring party drugs into the venue.
Bouncers count the number of people admitted to a club in order to prevent stampedes and fire code violations, and also enforce a club's dress code, frequently accepting bribes to let people jump the queue. Many clubs have balcony areas specifically for the security team to watch over the clubbers.